Yes, what a wonderful way to kick off a Christmas Eve premiere. Starting off with some Christmas lights. Right now, as you are sitting here watching this video, if I'm not with you, I'm probably out doing that same stroll. That's my favorite stroll every Christmas season. I go by that neighborhood at least twice a week. So thank you for joining me on my Christmas Eve premiere. And I just wanted to start off by saying that I've had a tremendous amount of fun over the last few years crafting with all of you, my subscribers, and all the wonderful YouTube creators. Now I have uh, taken some time to do uh, diamond painting, I've done cross stitch, I've played with some polymer clay, and for this premiere, I just wanted to kind of chit chat with you guys and go over a lot of the creativity I've tried to display over the last few years. Playing above in the background, you're gonna see a beautiful rendering of Mandy Manzano's Mulan. And yes, it has been blinged out. Uh, almost every color had been adorned with some sort of sparkler or crystal or AB drill. Um, and uh, in my video for last year's, uh, we had a Halloween collab. Um, he was introduced in order to go over a lot of the customized uh, ideas that he had. You guys know him as Man Bun if you're, uh, you've are you been uh, subscribed to my channel for a while. His name is Brandon. And uh, yeah, enjoy looking at some of his artistic creativity. Now, um, as I said, what I wanted to do is kind of focus on some of the work that I've done over the last few years. Um, but I get asked a lot of questions uh, here and there. One of the questions that I think you guys really ask all the time is, what was your best or worst date? <laughs> oh, if, you, if, you're, if you have been here for a while, then you will know. Um, I call it snatch a wig. <laughs> it was snatch a wig night. That's all I can say. <laughs> Uh, I come home from work, my dad, I grew up with my dad. So as an adult, you know, he, I think he felt his job was to kind of elbow me out there, get me out there playing the field so I can get up out of his hair. Come home from work and a gentleman that I thought was so fine. I mean, he was really good looking. And on top of that, he was a few years older than me in school, but I had such a big crush, such a big crush. Anyway, he had been home from the military and he was going to be there for, I think about 30 days. And he had stopped by day one to see if I was home and to try and take me out. I was so excited, but we were playing phone tag all day. So, you know what I have to do. I gotta keep calling, I gotta leave a message with my dad. Anyway, he comes back by and says that he wanted to take me out to eat for that evening. And I was so excited. When I tell you, I got upstairs, I got pretty, I had all the bits and pieces on task. I had my make I don't even wear makeup, but I had makeup on that day. I felt like I was looking good. I had on a little mini skirt, had on my little high heel gym sis. Couldn't tell me nothing. I remember back in that day, <laughs> those uh, sheer tops where you wore your uh, matching bra underneath you know, kind of added that extra sex appeal. That was big. And I believe I had on a sheer top with a mini skirt and my little high heels. I loved that little black seam that came down the back of uh, black. I used to wear that all the time, all the time. Anyway, I'm looking good. 
he picks me up. He's looking, eh, I'm, you know, I'm a little skeptic about his outfit because he comes, he's got on a baseball cap. He's got on a jersey. He's got on uh, sand, like sand washed, sand stoned uh, blue jeans. And he's got on white tennis shoes. It's cute, you know, it's cute. It's, it's, you know, it's years ago, so keep in mind. <laughs> but it wasn't cute for how I was dressed. It was definitely underdressed. And I'm looking like, after dinner, we can hit the club. That's how I'm looking. You know, we're going to, I grew up outside of Cleveland, Ohio. So we can go into town. We can head up this back before the flats shut down. We can head down to the flats. That used to be waterfront property. And they had nightclubs and they had restaurants. So, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be amazing. Beautiful scenery down by the waterfront. I have on my beautiful outfit. I saved this for those nights where I know, hmm, you know, I'm going to be looking good for a reason, right? Anyway. We go out. Now, the car looked good. He picked me up in like an RX-7, um, something like that. Uh, and so, and he was a gentleman. He opened the door because he, if he didn't open the door, I wasn't going. So, I'm going to tell you, that's a requirement. He didn't fail that checklist. <laughs> uh, so, he then decides, you know, what you have a taste for. <laughs> food, you know. Um, but at that time, you know, I was felt. I didn't have the shoulders that I have today. And so at that point, you know, I'm going to let him decide. Whatever you have a taste for, I'm okay, you know. So I didn't want to appear to be starving hungry. But remember, she came in from work. So I am a little peckish. And I can't wait to share with you guys where this date ended up going. What do you think happened? What are some of your guesses? I'd be interested to see if you guys follow me. Or if you're new here, why don't you go ahead and type in a guess right now? Because I can't wait to get the conversation going and to keep talking about this funny night. Want to slow it down here and transition real quickly over into another craft that I have so much passion about. Yes, this is polymer clay and these are some of the fun things that I've attempted to do. Um, there's so many more I couldn't choose but this was a project that I worked on. I got a lot of views on the video and I wanted to rehash that. This is so much fun. I put together a few favorite colors. My mom's favorite color is blue and silver. And so I created just a little design so that I can show her some of the fun that you can have with clay. And boy, was she impressed. Not only was I able to put together these different hues of blues, gray, white and black as an accent, but I was able to then use the colors, those major colors that you see, to provide background. So I had a pattern, I had background, and then again, I definitely had some accent pieces. So what you're seeing me do here, it's called a Klim tea. And one of the things that I am trying to do is just to create a pattern um, I definitely was trying to make something for my mom. It was a theme. She had just bought an outfit with all of these colors in it. And so because she had done so, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make her some jewelry. Boy, did I have fun. From start to finish, it was amazing. I was able to take her favorite colors and use some a little creativity, a little Pinterest, <laughs> and create some works of art that she really enjoyed and she definitely appreciated. Why don't you type down in the box right now, kind of let us know what are some of the things that you would appreciate as a gift from others. 
We are all in the crafting game and eventually someone's going to need to give a gift, especially something that reminds them of you. What type of items would you prefer to receive? What type of items, you know, pique your interest the most? We have so much interest and so many different uh, tastes when it comes to canvases. You know, let's see what we can do. As you can see now, I have moved over to creating the pattern. Again, this was definitely amazing. That is what the colors look like after they got extruded through an extruder and each of the pieces got stacked, um, creating its very own pattern. Um, again, several different colors can be uh, pieced together. Um, there are some Facebook uh, sites where that's all they focus on when it comes to the craft is extruding and what they create from their extruded pieces. Um, obviously, this was early in my career with clay because that's not even primo. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, I had a lot of fun. I enjoy the project. Um, a lot of these are novelty items where you guys can enjoy the pieces uh, right along with us. So hopefully when you see what I was able to accomplish with these, you'll see that, you know, there is some of our own built-in creativity um, on top of uh, us following a design or a pattern piece. Look up and see what I have been able to accomplish. And here we go. So much fun. Yes. So that is my clay accomplishments. I have tried to get better at caning. I have definitely had a lot of fun creating some ergonomic pins uh, for more for comfort. Um, but they are tiny. You know, they come in two different sizes. Um, a lot of people like the, the smaller little pup. However, they do find that the Curvy Gal, which is my larger pin, um, they find that one to be a little bit more comfortable. So we're going to return to my dating story. And I last left off with, where do you think we were heading? 
because I certainly had high expectations. I thought we were going to dine on the waterfront. I could not wait. I remember thinking, hmm, what will I order? And I had all of my favorites at the forefront. As we are driving down the road, something kind of hit me. I'm like, hmm, what's going on? What's going on? The road, it wasn't the best road. It was really bumpy. It needed some sort of pavement. And I'm like, oh, you're going to tear your car up. Not realizing, yeah, over on the nice side of town where they have fine dining, beautiful steak houses, lovely Chinese, gorgeous, gorgeous Italian restaurants, their roads are intact. There's no bumping, nothing. Here, he's about to tear out everything, his entire undercarriage. So I'm looking around. I want to reach over my shoulder and hit the lock, but eh, I don't want to offend him. So what's a girl to do? I, just being patient, just being kind, we're reminiscing. I don't want to kill the vibe. How many times has anyone ever been in that situation? <laughs> Leave it to me. Lo and behold. <laughs> so we're riding down the street, you know, not the greatest of neighborhood. And the next thing I know, he pulls off the road into a little parking lot. He pulls into the parking lot of Taco Bell. Nope. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I said it. Taco Bell. I thought he was joking. Or I thought he was going to check a tire or a rim or something. Right? No. He gets out the car after he turned it off. That's a little permanent, right? It's a little permanent. So, you know, he gets out. He closes the door. My gentleman, remember I said he came and he opened the door. I wouldn't have gotten in the car otherwise. My gentleman gets out the car, slams his door behind him, and starts heading in to the restaurant. Well, to Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, if you want to eat, <laughs> you better get out and do something, girl, because, you know, he coming back. He ain't coming to check on you, you know. Um, so I, I get out. I'm, you know, in my little high heels. I got my little blacks. I'm trying to, you know, catch up to them and things. I can't run real fast because there's potholes everywhere, right? And I'm whew, looking like, you know, I got a peg leg. I'm going up and I'm going down. I'm trying to get a little bit faster, you know, but the potholes, they're not evenly spaced. So she is off her game. Her rhythm is just off. We get inside, and he's serious. He's not going into the restroom. That was my last hope, you know. He's got to go to the restroom. So I'm thinking, if he has to go to the restroom, let me go in. You know, maybe I'll go as well. No. He gets inside, and he goes up to the counter. And I'm like, okay, well, you know. He he did go off to the military, and, you know, he's he's new. And so perhaps, you know, he had, he's not making a lot. You know, he's not making a lot. And so what was I thinking, right? What was I thinking? Let's, let's, uh, he's at least, you know, taking me out. He sought me out. He's here for a month. You know, how shallow of me, right? He proceeds to place his order ahead of me. But, you know, again, he's in transition. He's transitioning from young adult to adult. <laughs> so, places his order before me. I get something a little small. Next thing you know, the lady, yes, the lady, as, as I'm giving my order, the lady hollers out, that'll be Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> uh, and she tells us the amount of the order. 
And so I'm standing there because she's, you know, she's telling us the amount of the order. And he starts to walk, you know, this is like the old time Taco Bell. You know, back in the day, Taco Bell, <laughs> you came in and you walked up to the counter and you ordered, you know, at the counter. Then you walked down the other end of that counter and, you know, it was a window where you received your items and things. He's already down there. And I'm looking at him. And then I'm looking at the cashier. And then I'm looking back at him. And the cashier leans forward, pokes her head out from behind the counter, and said, I said, that'll be da 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 And he looks back at her and said, you good? You got it, right? Ah, what? <laughs> what? She leans back, and now she's looking at me, right? She's looking at me. What an attitude, because she don't want to be there, and I damn sure didn't want to be there. And now guess what? We all here, and it wasn't either of our idea. I'm sure she didn't think, mm, I can't wait to go to work at Taco Bell. And I'm sure thinking, mm, I can't wait to get. I'm not thinking that. And he's standing there with no worries in the world. I'm not even fibbing when I say he's looking at his nails, you know, brushing them off on his chest and because he's accomplished and he's feeling proud of himself, very proud of himself. So I'm, <laughs> I will say that, you know, these life lessons that we have to learn sometimes, you know, they have to be ingrained and, and they have to be, you know, the, the right time, okay? So I'm a little irritated at this point, a lot irritated. I, I'm looking good. Remember I told you I, I got my makeup on, got my, my nice outfit on. I have extremely long hair, and it could be a pain in the butt to do, especially if you're wanting curls, you know. So what I have always done over the years, I have always kept a couple of short wigs. And it's a little bit easier to kind of put your hair in some braids and wrap the braids around your head and put on a short wig than it is to put in the effort of curls and all of that in your own hair. When he stood there blowing on his nails like the most accomplished man in the United States, I think, yeah, I think I blacked out. I'm not sure. You know, they say that everyone at this this juncture in life has a time or two had, you know, a moment where, you know, they just turned, they went red. You know, they went red, they saw black, and they don't know what occurred after that. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Pretty sure. I'm, you know, I'm not 100% because I, I can actually tell you guys. But what went on to happen Please stay tuned because it is hilarious. Well, I hope that you guys are really enjoying a lot of these transitions and a lot of the work that you've seen that I've worked on over the last few years. I know that I am, you know, switching off and just making sure that I show some of the pieces that I'm proud of. But as I've entertained you guys, many of you have heard these stories before. Again, I'm in the midst of sharing with you guys one of the most requested tales, one of the, the uh, stories that I get so many questions on. And so I'm sharing with you some glimpses, you know, obviously over the years, I have definitely made them funnier. Um, but there's, um, trust me, trust me when I say I'm 100% within the confines of what actually occurred. <laughs> so moving right along from there, <laughs> I saw red. I saw red. I, I swear I went black. I blacked out. Um, I don't remember what happened, but I'm pretty sure it went a little something like this. I know your cheap broke ass didn't bring me to Taco Bell. You see what I look like? Do you see 
what I have on, oh my God, I put more effort into this outfit than you put it. Are you serious? What have you been doing for the last two years? I was going off. And before I knew it, I said something akin to, I have wasted a good look on you. Let me take my hair off. And yes, she snatched off her wig. I will never forget. Looking back, I could see the cashiers. Guess what they was doing? Head popping out again from behind the cashier's booth. They were laughing. I was loud. I was going off. I snatched that wig off. And the plaits and that messed up hair. Oh, I'm sure if you guys have watched YouTube, TikTok, Vine, Instagram, Facebook, even regular TV, there have been several opportunities that you've had to see a woman snatch her wig off or somebody else snatch the wig off, especially when they least expect it. They're not expecting for whatever's underneath to be exposed. Put put Because again, remember, she was at work, right? <laughs> And she came home, and it was supposed to be wonderful news. I bet you my daddy forgot to relay a part of that message. Hey, if you down for Taco Bell, you know, holler at your boy. I don't have no money, but I'd be glad to join you. That had to be the part of the message that was missed. Nonetheless, he had the audacity to look shocked. Now, does that surprise any of you that know me? Any of you that really know me? Does that shock you? Does that shock you that I got so upset because of how I felt I was being treated that I snatched off my good wig to save it for a better time? That, that sounds like me, right? Okay, I'm just, you know. Anyway, I'm going off and I'm so mad I left Taco Bell walking. I'm sure you can picture the story. I'm coming out. Now I'm on the side where the drive-thru comes by. And you know, we already in a bad neighborhood where they can't even patch up the roads. You know, and like I said before, the parking lot was hideous. I mean, every other step was a hole, a pothole. And I'm in my good high heels. I got my nice little seam up the back. Yeah, I was. I, I thought I was looking good. That seam split into like three seams that night. Coming up my leg. I'm trying to get to the nearest bus. I was trying to get to the nearest bus stop, y'all. And guess what? She had a... <laughs> she had a couple of dimes and a quarter on her because she used the pay phone. This... Does this tell you guys how long ago this was? She used the payphone and called her a cab. Not pulled out my cell phone and, and called an Uber or Lyft. And someone picked me up right outside the door before the next pothole. Because that's what, you know, lazy look like today. But no, nah, um, I made it out that doggone junky ass parking lot. I mean, I was, I felt like I was dodging, you know, mines. <laughs> it was in a minefield. And that's why the holes were so substantial. I mean, I looked like I had a couple peg legs. I was just bobbing up and down trying to get out that parking lot. I know you didn't bring me to no Taco Bell. Oh my God, I've been working hard. I got my check where it's yours. And then you go ask me, am I good? Do I got this? And you looking offended like she ain't got it? Are you serious? This is my luck. Man, I walk home from the corner because I got dropped. Off. I lived on a cul-de-sac. And a lot of people didn't like going up in there. So <laughs> my house was the only house on the street. I get in, I'm trying at this point to calm myself down. <sighs> My pops wants to know, how did the, hey, what the hell's going on? Why are you looking all beat up and, <sighs> are you serious right now? So I relay to him what happens. I tell him, 
Because I'm sure in my heart of hearts, I'm pretty sure, man, you had to have missed something. Because there, this cannot have been his plan. No, it could not have been. Like, he just erred on the side of wrong. Who errs on the side of erring, you know? <laughs> anyway, my dad was like, you did what? He was so mad at me. I was like, what did I do? How you gonna snatch your wig off? You don't know. Are, you, are we serious right now? Like, I'm, I'm so sure that you forgot a portion at some point. You forgot a portion of this story. Did he tell you where he was taking me? Did you see what I looked like when I left? That was not Taco Bell gear. I don't even think I own Taco Bell gear. I was so mad. I was so mad. I really think that my dad was getting me back. Because a few years before, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I had, <laughs> sorry about that. I had got him so, not that I was trying to get him, but I did, I, I polished off a girlfriend for him, you know. And I always used to tell him, you can thank me. You want to thank me now? You can thank me. He'll see something. <laughs> He'll say, oh, I remember when Marie said something like that to me. And I'd be like, you can thank me. You want to thank me now? <laughs> I really think he got me back. I mean, he got me back. I did take a gander at myself. I looked in the mirror. Woo! All I can say is when it comes to snatching off, of, make sure when you snatch your own wig off, you okay. That you're not going to get carted off nowhere. I know people was looking at me like I was crazy. Keep in mind, I had a couple of dimes and a quarter on me. She had just went to the pay phone. And made a call. And she was getting dropped at the corner. Like I just. Whew, I need to calm myself down. Can you imagine that? Like think about it now. In 2022. Mm, I could tell you right now. If I knew somebody. That was going through all of that. And I seen them. I probably wouldn't be sitting beside them. If I was the Uber driver. I probably would just keep right on going. You know I'm sorry. I know we can only cancel so many. Before, you know, we start getting penalized. This is a good one. I'm taking the judgment call. This is a good one. Can you imagine picking up some crazy looking woman from, <laughs> from outside of a payphone? She got on busted pantyhose. She got one heel on, one heel in her hand. She walking. She got, <laughs> because she got on a mini skirt, she looked like she pimping. <laughs> she like she pimping and in pain at the same time. I'll never forget. I got my wig in one hand, my broken high heel in the other, and I'm still trying to walk and limp. I was pissed. Picture that. Picture it. Just take the wig off. <laughs> I got plaits and hair askew. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Lord. <laughs> and it's those types of days that I sit and chuckle about when I am painting when I'm playing with clay, even when I have my feet up and I'm cross-stitching. <laughs> How many times have you guys listened to all of us creators and you've chuckled and you've laughed? Because <laughs> that's what we're here for. Share our funniest moments while we create. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's one of the most asked about stories that I've ever shared. You guys ask about that all the time. <laughs> so if you guys look up on the screen, what you have been watching is me. Uh, that is the Snow Queen. Uh, that is a Hannah Lynn. That is blinged out. I really put my all into that. Love it so much. Hopefully you guys are enjoying all the different colors um, that I've added to it. And look at how it came out. It is so beautiful. Stay tuned.
bringing to you out of the shadows. The phone was hung back on the hook inside the phone booth. She lowered her head and rested her forehead on the back of her hand. That's when the shaking started. As she tried to slow the shaking of her hands and calm her breathing, she felt a wetness pull around the base of her nose. She reached her hand up to discover blood leaking profusely. She stepped back and reached down into her backpack to get a napkin or a tissue or the sleeve of her favorite sweatshirt now ripped up and torn to pieces. That's when the flash of him grabbing her by her sweatshirt and tearing it popped into her head. Why? She thought to herself. He's never exhibited any signs of any anger or aggression. As she held the sleeve to her nose to mop up the pouring blood, another memory popped into her mind. I'm used to getting my way, he said, after he shared stories of besting his high school buddies. She remembered congratulating him. Oh, honey, there's no congratulations needed. I will work as hard as needed to get what I want. Oh, how she wished she'd seen that glint in his eyes then that showed up again in his eyes tonight. What started out so simple? A lab partner that she was paired with all semester. The worst partnering in the history of the university. Oh, how she hated athletes. But he did prove to be different than the others. For starters, he'd opened a book before. He prepared for the lesson and didn't leave all the work on her. He brought intelligence to their debates and could support his own hypotheses. Being the president of his fraternity also meant he was a leader and an activist and a civic organizer. The way the girls fell at his feet and all the dates he was always chatting about she was in no jeopardy of tempting him. She certainly never gave a second look in his direction. As they were now nearing the end of the semester, it was not out of the ordinary for them to check on their pro projects and test their theories. She never questioned why their seed project was planted and grown in his niece's apartment just outside of town. She never requested his notes when he stated he'd go and check on their progress. Tonight was the culmination of all their hard work, the fruits of their labor. They were simply going to check their results and cross-reference it against their hypotheses. The surprise on her face when he pushed her into the wall next to their seed project seemed to excite him further. He lunged at her reaching to grab a hold of her favorite sweatshirt as she tried to escape his grasp. He grinned and screeched, oh, 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 you're a fighter. I would never have guessed. The headlights flashed her back to the phone booth. By now she was kneeling next to her backpack with her back resting against the lower glass panel of the booth. She strained through a swollen eye to see if the headlights belonged to her dorm roommate. The car passed and it wasn't the roommate. She got to her feet and walked outside the phone booth. She could hear someone's music off in the distance and the whir of traffic as it passed by. She needed to move. She was looking for, she was looking around for a quiet, dark place. She hovered next to a tree just outside of a closed electronics shop. The horror of tonight was beginning to dawn on her. The embarrassment and more importantly, the shame washed over her. As the lights of her roommate's car came into her vision, she stepped back into the shadows and hid. Moving on, Jade heard every step echoing as she walked down the long hallway. 
she stood just outside the doors and looked up into the bright halogen light. I remember every one of those gifts. The bracelets, earrings, and necklaces were divine. All the diamonds, sapphires, and rubies I'm sorry, one moment. All the diamonds, sapphires, and rubies were so beautiful. And the way they sparkled, I remember the joy I felt when I saw that spark of jealousy all of them felt when I shared my love's newest purchase, she thought. No one would ever have guessed. How could they? Every one of those beautiful baubles were her personal badge of armor. These badges weren't worn during her battles like an actual soldier. They were more a display of her hard fought battle. She thought about how long it took for each of her battle wounds to heal and disappear. She closed her eyes and lowered her head. She couldn't believe she was here today. She stood outside the courtroom doors, tears threatening to ruin her makeup for the third time today. How could she have prevented this? She found herself thinking so much over the last year. She thought she was hiding her pain, hiding her embarrassment, hiding her shame. She didn't think it was anyone's business about her life and what she worked so hard to keep hidden. Every blow she took, she took from him more and it destroyed her inside and out. She questioned her ability to think, her ability to make decisions, and her ability to show her own vulnerability and frailty to anyone she knew. She tried to hold her head high as rumors swirled around her about what she suffered. But how could she walk away? She was his speechwriter. She was his stylist. When he got blackballed in the industry, she became his manager and helped rebrand him. And when he won that multi-million dollar contract and left her for another woman, she sighed. She held her head up high and she tried to move on. She put on a brilliant performance and told no one the ordeals she suffered. She shook her head. No, she told herself. She pushed through the doors and walked down the aisle to the witness stand. She blindly walked through the motions of swearing in and taking her seat. When the prosecutor spoke, he asked, Jade, can you tell the court why you're here today? Jade swallowed and began slowly. I had no idea how my hiding in the shadow so detrimentally impacted her life. All I can think about is, had I have talked about my shame, talked about my embarrassment, talked about my abuse and stepped out of the shadows, I wouldn't be here testifying against her ex. I wouldn't be facing the man that beat my baby sister to death and left her lying on the floor in front of their three-year-old son and wishing for his death because she would have known to leave. Two different lives. two different stories. Both of them had the same need. Someone that they just needed to talk to.
Well, this has definitely been an amazing way to spend Christmas Eve. I hope that I am able to go on to enjoy so many of everyone's stories, to see so much variety in how we all create. Hopefully you've enjoyed my little uh, trip down memory lane. Um, I really had a lot of fun. Um, when I go back and I think about all of those canvases, I feel like that is what I have come to the craft for. I have, I'm looking to fill time, and I love that when I'm working on a particular piece, that it takes me back in a, in, into time, it takes me back to a collab, it takes me back to a conversation. It takes me back to when I was sitting and listening to a creator and they shared a story of their own. And every time I look at that particular canvas, it just reminds me of that creator's story, of that creator's woe, of that creator's fun. So I hope that I've given you guys a well-rounded, you know, amount of information. <laughs> um, not only do I have fun, but I've been there for a lot of the prolific moments when we've done the dp and we've had to touch on different awareness issues, such as mental health awareness, domestic violence, homelessness, and all of those causes that mean so much to us. I love that we see that there are creators out here that create opportunities for you to be able to share, to be able to talk, to be able to resonate with someone else about things that you may be encountering. So make sure that you guys continue to come back because we're all a community and we're all striving to help one another through whatever we're going through that causes us to just kind of check out sometimes to not have someone to communicate directly with make sure that you guys reach out or keep reaching out and have a variety of people that you can't wait to communicate with and share with create a new family